Hello, Geneva. I'm Mayor Kevin Burns, and this is Business Beat. And we are joined today by the owner, proprietor, coffee roaster extraordinaire, and our host, Mr. Eric Anderson of Fresh Ground Coffee on Stevens Street in beautiful Geneva. Eric, thanks for having us. Great to be here. Appreciate this is it. awesome, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful day, and it's warm here. It is very warm in but here. But it's always warm in here. Pretty much. Pretty much, because we have a big oven here. It's amazing. You can hear the coffee brewing, and we're going to meet this coffee roaster in a moment. But sure. This is a fairly new enterprise. You you joined us from West Chicago. Right. We moved over here in October. Yeah. In, it's amazing. Uh, 2014. Good timing. Good timing. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect so, timing. It's great. It is awesome. Had our grand opening in February, and uh, we're excited fun. to be in this area. Oh, it was it's wonderful. Fun. It's wonderful. Fun. Great I was, turnout. I was talking to Mrs. Anderson earlier, and she yeah. mentioned that just the volume of traffic here is, is, has been great. Yeah. We've yeah. seen a huge increase in the walk-in traffic. People are starting to notice us, and it's yeah. nice to be kind of in this artisan corridor oh, that we've had back here. it's amazing, here. isn't it? We've got a lot of great businesses yeah. in this area. Because as you know, the history of Stephen Street was very much industrial for years. Right. And it's it's changed and blossomed in such a way, and you obviously add to that. Yes, it's so been that's fun. Cool. Now i got to ask you a question. The coffee industry from the naked eye seems very populated. But you're coming into an industry and you have a special product to offer. Absolutely. What's, what's different about Fresh Ground? Well, we get all of our coffee that we source from missions and from other organizations okay. working directly with farmers. Right. Coffee is the second largest traded commodity in the world behind Amazing. oil. There's a lot of coffee going around the world and as a result, unfortunately, a lot of corruption. Most wow. coffee's grown in third, third, uh, third world countries yeah. that just don't have a lot of money flying around okay. and a lot of farmers that don't know what they're how to grow a good crop or don't have a good outlet product, yeah they don't have a good outlet okay. and they don't have a lot of good training so a lot of the organizations that we work with are right on the ground working with the farmers oh, teaching cool. them how to grow better crop giving them an opportunity to taste their coffee right. they don't have the facilities to roast their own coffee to taste it to know what a quality cup is or how to grow it so all the organizations that we work with to get our coffee are working with the farmers to help them develop their businesses in well, their neat. countries. Yeah. Now, so, so beautiful little Geneva. Yep. So all around the world. Yeah, so we've got. Your coffee. This is some of the areas where we get our coffee. You can see our 321 up there like in uh, beautiful Geneva. <laughs> That's the blend that we have that we named after our at street yeah. address here. Smart move. So, Good branding. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> A couple other uh, key spots that we get our coffee in. The purple area is between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Those are ah. where all of the coffee in the world is grown. Uh, it has to be between those know areas. Yeah. I had no idea. Uh, that's uh, highlighted where the areas are. And also, Arabica, good quality Arabica coffee, needs to be grown at a high elevation Got above 3,000 feet. Okay. So uh, these are some of the areas where we've got our coffee coming from, uh, Honduras and Mexico. and some coffees in Africa and also in Indonesia as well are where the key areas we get our stuff so, from. You know, a simple question is, what the heck's your long distance bill like? <laughs> I mean, are you, are you are you working with brokers? Yeah, do you, we okay. do. There's an element of the direct trade, although we're working direct trade and we, have, yeah. we know who's on the ground working with the farmers. You got it. The import-export process is so huge. Oh that there is somebody that's just in charge of doing that. So that's the person that we directly wow. deal with. Uh, I don't, I'm not making phone calls to farmers yeah, okay. a whole lot, so that's good. I wanted good. to see your cell phone bill, <laughs> my God. But this is the roasting process, and one of the things I wanted to point out right now is Ryan's doing this, you can kind of hear it cracking a you little can, bit. Yeah. yeah, and like popcorn. So the coffee starts out green, and. Uh, during the process of roasting, it gets to a certain point where there's moisture in the bean right. and it's expanding very quickly. And that's how we get this cracking sound that we call first crack. Uh, is it actually cracking the shell off? Uh, it's not cracking the shell off. The bean is expanding. Oh, got it. Okay. So it's a little tiny one and now it's getting a little bit uh, darker and it's expanding very quickly. And then we'll let it go for a little while longer and eventually it'll crack a second time where some of the other chemicals and stuff in there are expanding is again. No kidding. Uh, between those two points are generally where we want to be with our coffee. Is that right? First crack is uh, a little bit lighter than we could ever sell it. Uh, second crack is about as dark as we want to go. So So that's the, that's the lingo of coffee. Yeah, first crack and second crack first is kind of where we're, okay. we're falling from lightest to darkest. So, you don't, you, so nobody drinks third crack. 
There is no third crack. Yeah, there is no third crack. <laughs> coffee sake. spontaneously combust. Yeah, just boom. That. It's amazing. <laughs> now, how did you become so expert in coffee? Uh, Do you a have lot an addiction? I have an addiction. Do you? <laughs> it sounds like your voice is very. Part of my business plan was actually getting my own coffee and not having to buy it anymore, so that it. paid for itself, not really. So here's a question, what did yeah. you do prior to this venture? Uh, I was actually in the IT world Isn't that and amazing? did a lot of stuff. There in you the go, IT. Pete. Oh, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this so, yeah. was always an interest of yours. It was an interest of ours. We, we actually uh, looked at a lot of different co coffee opportunities. Okay. Uh, we looked at cafes, we sure. looked at the possibility of a cart or a kiosk yeah. or even a truck and had about a dozen business plans on no my kidding. on my computer. And uh, so I actually had a conversation with Bob Untide at uh, oh, sure. Three Grams yeah, Chocolate. Absolutely. And uh, he was talking to me, he said, you know, one of the things you ought to do if you're going to do a cafe is you need to have one of those little coffee roasters in, the, in your shop. And this is a little one. And <laughs> yeah, I, I initially said, no, I'm not really interested in that. It's too much, too much expense and too much right, learning, right. and kind of walked away and thought about it for a little bit, and then I said, well, what if I just did the roasting part and don't worry about the cafe right now? We all wow. have several good coffee shops sure. in Geneva. Uh, and when I thought about that, kind of, and then got into, met the guy that gets me a lot of the contacts for the direct trade coffee, okay. and was able to see the story behind that and how we could oh. help people directly with that, uh, it kind of all fell into place. And I know that your coffee is served throughout the community. Yes. Which is kind of neat. Yeah, absolutely. So we get to parlay those all relationships around, yeah. and, and everything else. Yep, so. absolutely. Wow. So I'm hanging out with Eric Anderson. What kind of coffee do you normally order? Do I normally Are you order? A one crack or two crack guy? <laughs> it's definitely, I, I like stuff on the lighter side. Oh, I like you do? to taste the unique flavors of coffee. Okay. When it gets really dark, you only taste the darkness of the coffee. So ah. I like to taste some really unique flavors in my oh, coffee. That's cool. Yeah. Now, Ryan over here just. Spilled the beans, no pun intended. Ha uh ha, -huh. very good. Is that good? Is that I've never coffee? heard that before. Never? Yeah, I'm sure you have. <laughs> so this is almost yeah. ready to go. Yeah, so what happened is we got, we finally got to the temperature that we wanted it to be at, and what this is doing is just spinning the beans around, and then there's air being pulled through that, so it'll cool it down and kind of stop the roasting process. For a so bit. when do you package them? Uh, after we do it, we'll drop them in here. We'll let them sit for a little while, a little okay. bit, and then we'll package them Usually let them sit for about three or four hours. Oh, really? Uh, there's still gases coming off of them. Uh, the bag tends to expand a whole lot. We want to let it sit for a little while before we package the beans up. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. So you would not just grab a scoop, grind it, and make coffee? Not, no. If you want to make it, you need to wait about 24 wait. hours. Oh, you do? After it's roasted, before you actually make it. It's like a fine bottle of wine. You yeah. want to sit and rest and... Only not that long. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> that's a holy moly. Listen, and you're in such an intimate setting here. Yeah. But it's plenty big enough to obviously produce what you do. Yep. Serve yep. your customers. Yes. And I've seen when it's been packed here before. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So Eric, while you're not a cafe, right. your customers come to buy the beans. Yes. And they take them home, they enjoy it, they yep. come back, they refill, whatever. Right. So, but someday you'd like to offer that cafe service maybe? Yeah, well, we're looking at yeah. options for a cafe. Although we're not a cafe, we're here. We're really about teaching people about what great coffee is. Uh, you have those great courses, I know. <laughs> so yeah, we do a lot of coffee brewing courses. Uh, people come in here, we'll teach them a whole bunch of different ways to brew coffee. We sell some of the coffee brewing equipment that they oh, might do. need. Yeah, okay. so we've got that. But doesn't doesn't the average well. person think I know coffee? Coffee's coffee. Yeah, there's a but, there's a craft market coming in. People well, are really? really interested in doing it at home and doing it better than they've done it before. So I teased uh, you last time. I said my Mr. Coffee doesn't do the trick. Your Mr. And you kind of laughed at me. Probably doesn't do doesn't the trick. Do the trick. So I thought it was good. There's a lot of great ways to brew coffee at yeah. home that we could teach people how to do. So that's why. No, I I grew up with the bun coffee makers. Uh -huh. Those are good. Those are, bun makes some great. We sell some commercial bun do coffee it? makers yeah. that are fantastic. It does the trick. So it does the trick. But I will be able to tell a cup of coffee using the beans here is far different. Absolutely. From the stuff if I buy off the shelf or wherever, if I brew it correctly. If you brew it correctly. Oh, good And Lord. if you come down and see us at uh, the Geneva French Market or yeah, any of the yeah. other farmer's markets that we're at. How was it had, yesterday? Great day. Great day. Fantastic. Awesome. I, I was a little concerned on Saturday when I know. Wasn't that rain brutal? is coming down, <laughs> but uh, it was a great day yesterday. But if you come down and see us, you'll notice that we're brewing in a Chemex brewer, okay. uh, which is a great pour over way to brew coffee, but uh, that we found that it makes a much better cup of coffee right? than just batch brewing. So oh, that's interesting. That's how we do that. Wow. I understand you we're going to take some or learn some techniques on how to 
Yeah, yeah we'll, do, a we'll do a, it's called a coffee cupping. Ooh, coffee cupping. And it's a process that we go through in the coffee business to taste all of the flavors that we get in coffee. It's that sounds great. Basically all of the steps that you normally do when you drink a cup of coffee, exaggerated. Is that right? We'll go it's a very dramatic and theatrical. It's a very dramatic and theatrical and a lot of fun. I like it. I so like it. We can do so that. So join Eric and I as we do some coffee cupping we'll in the that. back room at Fresh Ground. Back room. <laughs> Let's go, folks. We're back in the inner sanctum of Fresh Ground Coffee. Eric's going to teach us what to really look for, experience, appreciate. It's a process that we go through called cupping. Cupping. And they actually do this all, I don't, just do it as a roaster, but we do it all along the coffee supply chain. Okay. Uh, roasters do it so we can QC our coffee when we, after we roast a batch. Quality check. Yep. And we also do it to uh, make sure that, uh, make buying decisions when we're getting in a new okay. new coffee or considering adding a new coffee to our line. We'll want to see what the different flavors so are. So how many coffees do you have in your line right now? Uh, right now I've got six single origin coffees, six. plus then we do several blends as long okay. as, as well as that. That's awesome. So, but uh, this is done, importers, exporters do it, farmers do it, uh, all sorts of people cup coffee. It's a very standard process to go through. Really? So, and, and as a matter of fact, it's so standardized that the SCAA, Specialty Coffee Association of America, has written a book this thick. Now that's gotta be a number one seller. On how to cup coffee. So if Seriously. you're ever really tired at night and wanna read something that'll put you right Maybe to Maybe during sleep, tonight's meeting. There you go. That's the book. Wow. So it's just gonna take me a minute here to grind some of this coffee. So you're just grabbing a little handful. What I wanna do between each of these is I wanna just throw a little bit in there so I clean out the grinder. It's called purging the grinder. So if there's any of the, the previous one sample. One crack, two crack, purging the grinder. When did you start drinking coffee? Uh, in college. Col yeah, me too. Yep. You added Wasn't a bunch of stuff to it. start in college? A bunch of sugar and stuff, and all of a sudden you go, yep. you just drink it black now though? Yeah. Me too. Most of the time. Unless I'm making a good drink, like a latte or something. Yeah, right, right, right. So one of the first things that we do when we're, when we're cupping coffee is that we want to evaluate the fragrance of the coffee. Okay. And there's actually, in our terms that we like to use, there's a difference between fragrance and aroma. Fragrance oh. is when it's dry, and when we'll, after we do this, we'll evaluate the aroma, which is when the grounds are wet. Got it. Okay. So the way I like to do it is I grab one of these cups, and I kind of tap the so the grounds are right at the edge. I like to keep it my hand on the end because if there's any lotion or soap or anything on your hand, you don't want to smell oh, like lavender, the... whatever. Sure. That's not a coffee smell, and then just stick. So, your do nose you in use there. lavender lotion? No, Eric? I don't use lavender lotion unless she buys it for me. That's <laughs> I understand. I don't know. But you just stick your old nose in there and take a big old whiff of the coffee. See what you smell. How do I know what I smell, though? That's an interesting question. The main thing for, for oh, most people who are just good. starting out, most people that are just starting out can smell a difference, but they can't put a name to what they actually smell, to all the flavors that they tell. So when I'm doing it with people who have never cupped coffee before, mm. I just say, as long as you can tell me that one's different than that one, oh, okay. or like that one, that's good. the main thing that you want to look for in coffee cupping. Wow. Now here's a silly question. No lavender lotion. What about if you're wearing cologne? You don't wear that either. I don't typically wear that Do you bathe at all? Coffee. Occasionally I bathe. Okay. She makes me. That can smell a little different. A little different between notes. Is the word smell, should I say smell? Yeah. No, that's yeah, that works. I can tell the difference in fragrance? Yep. Okay. Wow. See, I don't have the art that you do. It, it, it's a lot of practice. This is stronger. That one's stronger? Is it? This is cool. So just a little bit, this is much lighter fragrance, at least to me. Mm -hmm. Do the Irish like know what they're talking about? Uh, so most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> Appreciate your honesty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet down the grounds. In these cups? In those cups, and uh, we'll have to wait about three or four minutes, and then we'll actually, we'll smell the aroma. Oh, okay. Woo. How important is water? Water is a absolutely key part of what everything that we do. So having good quality filtered water um, is important. Now look how perfect that is. Right to the top. Right to the top. And 
watch it bloom. Yeah, when you when you get voice off to the distance is Krista Anderson. There she is, folks. When you get freshly roasted coffee, there's still gases that are in the beans themselves, uh, carbon dioxide typically. And uh, when it's first, uh, when you first put water on it, it'll start to expand. Like you can see, oh, these yeah, kind sure. of bubbling up a little bit like that. It's called a bloom. It's a bloom. Now you wouldn't drink it with the bloom on, would you or would you? Never with the grounds in it, no. Never with the grounds We want to let it go for a little bit first. Wow. And you learned all this because of your passion, and plus you had to. I had to, yeah. Yep. So when you have folks come in and participate in the coffee cupping, yep. Are they somewhat knowledgeable or completely? That's the fun part about this whole thing is a lot of times we'll get customers in here who have never had coffee before in their lives. Really? Or have ne certainly have never cupped coffee. And it's a great teaching opportunity for us. We love to be able to teach them a little bit more about coffee and about sure. what it's, uh, what's involved in, in making it and tasting good coffee. So I'm gonna set the timer on my phone here. For three oh, you minutes. You can see it all. It's awesome. Isn't that Actually, that is a beautiful shot. We got to Instagram that shot. That's cool. <laughs> is there? You, you have wine aficionado. Is there a magazine for coffee roasting? Uh, yeah. Actually, it's called Roast Magazine. Who knew? No kidding. Right there. Can only roasters like you subscribe, or uh, can anybody, they anybody can subscribe to that? Well, that's cool. It might not be as interesting for somebody who's not I mean, roasting. It's but, cool uh, though. Yeah. It's very cool. Wow. So, so after my timer in a minute and 45 seconds goes off, what we're going to do is we're going to continue and we're going to evaluate the aroma. Okay. Which is what happens when it's wet. Okay. We're not tasting. We're just still... Still not tasting it. Smelling. Um, the olfactory. Exactly. The way, we, the way we do this is we will put the uh, spoon in the edge of the cup like this and kind of push the grounds back so that all the gases and everything that have been trapped under the crust of the coffee here will come out and when then we'll bend down we'll take a big old whiff of those so the bloom is actually the grounds yeah it's just the grounds on the top interesting so but this is again what we're doing in this whole process is we're just exaggerating what we would normally go through when we when we taste a cup of coffee so when you when you pour yourself a cup of coffee and you're taking a drink you're engaging your sense of smell, you're right. engaging your sense of taste. So we're exaggerating all of those processes so that we can pick out all of the little details that, that and are And you'll do of all of this prior to selecting a new brand we'll do that all, you'll create? We'll do all of it prior to selecting a new coffee that we bring in. Okay. We'll do it when we blend coffees. We'll do it on a regular basis after we roast wow. as a QC step. We do a lot of cupping. And I, I would assume, anyways, you take or encourage feedback from your customers. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Interesting. So, so we should be right, about ready right now. I'll show you the first one and maybe you can follow it up after me. I will break the crust on one of them because breaking the crust is a big deal. So you once, do it's it broken on the, once it's broken on the first one, you really can't get the same effect on any other ones here. Oh. So I'll leave one or two for you to do, but then I'll do it. The other thing that you want to do is after you do it, we've got these bowls of got water here, the... just kind of dip them in there. but. See what you smell. Go for it. Good lord. Be aggressive. You're not. You're not going to spill. You're not going to make a mess. Oh, I'm so lightheaded. <laughs> Jeez, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had anybody pass out during a cupping this yet. This could be the first Let's for God's sake. I'll make this one the first. I like that. <laughs> I see my grandma. So that's it. You can't do that again with that one. Not with that one. But you can go down to the next. So what did you do sample. there? You did it differently. So stick it right in the edge there. Okay. Kind of push this, push the ground back so you can see the. There you go. Wow. You can get as close as you can to kind of taste the. Can you can you tell a difference between those I can. two? Yeah. There is a difference. Oops. Go so 
so for it. I'll, I'll theoretically, get it anyway. these will all taste. Yeah. Well, excuse me. The, the fragrance and the aroma will be similar. Will be very, very similar. We do it because if there's a contamination, a bad bean in oh, okay. the batch or something like Hence that. That's the magic we number three. Sure, yeah. Three. Sometimes we do five. Sometimes. Is that right? Yeah. I could have my own TV show. Oh, see, that smells delicious. It's nice, isn't it? It is nice. A lot of great flavors in the Ethiopian. God, that's awesome. And this is all Ethiopian. Uh, actually, there's several different ones. I got a Sumatran, so that's Indonesia, and then Ethiopia here. Uh, we have a Mexican Oaxaca right here, which has got a different flavor. It's a lighter, seems like a lighter color. It is a lighter roast. Okay. And then we've got one from Uganda here as well. So really? all different countries, uh, and sometimes Particularly in, in these two over here, they're really different flavor profiles. So that's why I like to put those kind of out on the table because people get to see how different those those two particular beans are. But from are. my unex inexperienced eye, mm -hmm. they, they look similar though. They, they're they gonna look very similar okay. in the rose profile, but they have different flavors and aromas wow. coming out. So That's cool. The last thing I'm gonna do here. That's a natural high, folks. In my mad scientist way. Uh oh. We're actually gonna finally get to taste the coffee. Yeah. What do you do there? You're taking off the... So I'm going to take off the stuff that we didn't use. Just scoop it off here so we got... And that's called the crust. That's the crust. But the next thing, we're actually going to taste the coffee. This is where we get to slurp. Hey, you're speaking and my language now. I don't, I don't like to slurp grounds in my mouth, so... Well, that's a good point, because sometimes my coffee maker leaves grounds in there. That's nasty. That's not good, is that's it? That's not good. So is it time for a new coffee all. maker then? Probably. Like, I can get you hooked up with that, man. Well, mine's from 1972. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of sentimental you know, value. I, <laughs> I think there's a museum somewhere you I could think probably there is. put that thing in. <laughs> now, I have heard that coffee grounds is actually good for your plants. Yeah, we uh, when we go through the stuff in the summer, yeah. we go through a lot of coffee at our farmer's markets, particularly with our iced coffee product that we sell, the black ice brew. So we will take those grounds and we will rebag them and give them for, uh, give them away for people to use in their, no in kidding. their uh, garden and stuff. Well, that's Keeps cool. the animals away, it's fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. So, I need to wait another minute So if here. I go to your home and it smells like Folgers? Yeah, it, no, it won't smell like Folgers. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Ever. That's like a that. bad word in the coffee. It is. <laughs> <laughs> made a cup of joe. Love that one. Why do they call it a cup of joe? I know the answer to this one. Is that right from the infantry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was goes back to military days. It does. Okay. And that's actually, uh, if you go into a coffee shop and order an americano, americano is an espresso with we did water in Ireland, added. Yeah. Yeah, and that came from uh, when the Americans were in World War II were over in in uh, Italy. Right. And in Europe in general, they didn't like the strong the strong coffee. That we had, it, okay. So they added water to it. What them. a marketing it gimmick that is. Known huh? as americano. So. That's, now you're uh, touching this, knowing the temperature is going to be uh, I'm getting ideal. An, I'm getting an estimate. Because to just, me, it's hotter than blue blazes. Yeah, it's it's, it's like, too hot. And if we if we taste it right now, it'll oh, actually, you'll be sued. All you taste is hot. Yeah. And I'll be at Delnor. Delnor, and, and wouldn't that look great? In the wouldn't paper? that be great? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been at this now since October. Here at this location. At this location. Yep. And the response has been great. Fantastic. People return and say, I never knew anything about coffee. Thanks for teaching me. Yep. Do they tend to offer their advice then too? Uh, I get a lot more people asking for advice. Is that right? Okay. I get a lot of people asking me, you know, they, they've tried a new brew method or they want to try a different okay. way of brewing coffee at home. And a lot of people come in and ask me, how, how should I do this? Or how much coffee should I use in my brewing okay. method? Or a lot of questions like that. And coffee is a healthy thing. They're coming out with studies it's all the amazing, time that it? say it's healthier and healthier for you. Yeah. So, wow. It's good stuff. And cold water always? Start with cold water. Start with cold water. When you actually brew it, you want it to be between 195 and 205 degrees, which is uh, just off a of boil. So when you're oh, okay. brewing, like if you're doing a manual brew method, we usually tell people to bring it to a boil and let it sit for about 30 seconds before you brew your method. It's like a coffee. good cup of Nescafe. No. Sorry, Nescafe. Can you see the articles that talk about healthy coffee? Yeah. That's the Arabica beans. 
Yeah. It is. If you see articles that talk about coffee not being good for you, that's robusta beans. Robusta beans are grown at a lower elevation, has three times the amount of caffeine, and it also is the kind of high industry cup crops that have fertilizer and oh, all okay. sorts of chemicals. So it's not, it's not organic. Exactly. This is, is this organic? Yes. Yeah, so when you're talking about all of ours are Arabica from family-owned crops that are grown up in the in proper elevation and, and with organic, sustainable practices. Right. So th there's a huge difference when you say coffee's good for you, coffee's not good for you, which coffee, coffee are you talking about? Yeah. It's like Jolt Cola or Diet Coke. <laughs> okay, something like that. So we're gonna go we're gonna go into the That clearly was not the analogy. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> clearly. I think you missed it. There. I think I missed That's it. Right. Ah. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually taste the coffee. And the way you wanna do it is you wanna slurp it into your mouth so that it sprays all over the inside of your mouth and then swish it around a little bit before you swallow it. So I'll show you what I do. I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt myself. It's good stuff. <laughs> Is that enough? That'll work. So why, I like why go, do you slurp? Uh, because it sprays the it coffee all over the, the inside of your mouth and it tastes all of the taste receptors that are in your mouth are firing at the same time so you get a fuller idea of what what the tastes are in the coffee that's interesting I can't slurp like you man I it did you go to high a school lot of practice that? no I, I have a degree in slurping do you really yeah no not really so I like to go through and I like to taste them all real quick and then go back and taste them again as the coffee cools so you can taste because Flavors change and new things come out as the coffee cools. Wow! So that's we'll go through and we'll taste it. We've cupped it. We've slurped times. it. We've virtually inhaled it. Yep, pretty much. Are you hot? I am a little bit. So am I. that big smoke <laughs> going over there is oh, it's killing awesome. me. That is fantastic. Wetting up a storm. So I can so. do all this, and I say, you know, I really enjoyed the. This is the Indonesian brand. I that's believe. the Sumatra. The yeah. Sumatra. Yep. Yep. So, and this is the, what I like so best. Coffee. Yeah. So then, then I can we, order a pound. You and can order boom. a pound online, or come in here and pick it up, and uh, we'll have it ready for you. So anytime I come in, I can order any of the six products you have. Any of the six plus the blend. Plus the blends. blends. Okay. Yeah. Do a lot of people blend it? Uh, yeah. We do some special blends. Our three twenty one is a blend. Right, yeah. We do a uh, an espresso blend that wow. we've got as well. So we got a lot of different uh, different oh, options out there. Fantastic. We ship anywhere in the United States. They ship anywhere in the United States. And yep. we have monthly subscriptions. Oh, well, 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 this is a perfect lead in then. Share with us your website. Okay, the website is freshgroundroast.com and you can order online there. Great. Any of our products as well as any of our brewing products. If oh, you cool. wanted to buy a Chemex or a pour over or an okay. AeroPress, those are all online there. Uh, we ship anywhere in the US. It's amazing. So you can do that or you can uh, order it online and uh, have it set to pick up here no kidding in Geneva oh, so that cool. uh, you don't have to pay shipping that way awesome and what's your phone number uh 630-457-4458 does that spell like coffee yummy uh no it's just the number 630-457-4458 awesome and you're located at of course 321 321 Stephen Street in Geneva awesome uh four blocks north of 38 on fourth street it's the place to be it's the place to be it's awesome and we can see you here every day every day from 10 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturdays. Oh, that is great. Isn't that great? I love it. Personally, I'm, I'm, I'm heating up here. I feel like I'm close to the sun. <laughs> it's all the coffee. All the coffee and that big machine And that big there. machine over there. Making a bunch of heat. Oh, it's fantastic, so, man. Yeah. Thank you for hosting us. Well, I appreciate you being really here. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you for the information. Much. Good to be here. That's Business Beat, ladies and gentlemen. We've just consumed 45 pounds of coffee. Tune in next time when we come down from the atmosphere.